Hello, scholars. This is Dr. Ball at ACE University. And I wanted to take a moment to explain RecyteWorks to all of you. So as all of you know, in chapter two, your uh, teacher of record needs to sign off on chapter two and your references. And one of the things that we're asked to do is make sure that you've cross-referenced and checked your references to make sure they're APA correct and acceptable for your dissertation. So the easiest way to do that is to use something called RecyteWorks. RecyteWorks is a website made by Harvard that will check your in-text references and your reference list. And so I wanted to show you how to use this. So usually you start with a login. I use my Gmail account to log in. Um, you can try a demo. I believe you can also make an account, but I log in and then you can check your paper. So I hit check now and see over here you have check as. So clearly for us, you wanna use APA sixth edition and then of course there's the Harvard style, which is probably what they use. And you can upload or paste your paper. I always upload. And then I am going to use one of my old papers before my dissertation was approved, um, just so I can show you how this works. So this is my unedited, unapproved dissertation back when I did it, and I want to show you the kinds of things that come. So I can upload this, I can hit check, and you can see that, uh, that it's working on it because it's such a large document, it'll take a moment. And what's going to come back will be three sections, one of which you don't need for a dissertation. But there'll be a list right here. You can see in-text citations. Let me collapse that. Oh, and check this first. See this pop-up here? If you read it, this usually refers to a spacing problem. See that? I've highlighted it. Is this the start or is this the start? So let me show you how you can fix that with, um, with your own dissertation. Okay, so I go to, I'll go right to the reference list down here. And then it said Baltzer or Associated Press. So we know that there's a problem between these. And I can check my spacing simply by hitting this backwards P. Okay, you see that? And everywhere there's a P, there's a return. I'm not seeing a problem here, so I'm gonna go on and I'm gonna continue to check my references. So I have the in-text citations, look at that. 487 out of 889, and I'm good with APA. 487 of them there's a question about. And on the reference list, look, 109. So those in red are what it's calling attention to. Now this website isn't perfect. It's going to tag things that don't always need tagged. For example, the date of my dissertation. Now, that doesn't need cited, right? And this is referring to my time points for my sample. Well, that doesn't need cited either. But as you start to go through, you can see problems. So let's look at this one right here. I've highlighted it. Okay, so it's telling me style warning to use and, and I used an ampersand, that I also need a comment to separate the last two authors. And this is the reference that it's matching to. Now, in order to find this in my paper, I can hit this search button and I can literally copy and paste this and put it into my document like so, right here. And it should take me back there I don't know why it didn't, but I can do that way, okay? Well, we 
we can scroll down and we can see some more things. Style warning. All authors' names should be followed by a comma, including before the ampersand. And look, they're talking about the number two reference. So not Bauman, they're talking about Smith and Haggerty. And again, I can click on that, see what it looks like in my document. And I can copy and paste it into my document and I can find it. There it is. And you can see the mistake. There's no comma right here. Let's turn off this backwards P. Okay, so you can go through, you'll be shocked at the mistakes you have in your in-text references. Misspelled name, wrong year, things like that. Or when you forget to add a reference to your reference list, it'll tell you. There's, it doesn't match any reference in your reference list. Uh, the other thing that you can check now, oh, that's not what I wanted to do. The other thing that I wanted to show you how to check was your uh, reference list, just to give you an idea. And somehow this isn't working. Okay, here we go. So let's go to the reference list now and see some of the things that you can find. So it found a problem right here with my first reference. There's a missing space. It will identify if you don't have things in alphabetical order. Sometimes it makes a mistake though, so be certain to check it. This isn't perfect. Expecting a comma after initials on this one. And look, it'll tell us matches. It's found in the document 12 times, five are possibly matched. And that refers to the in-text references that I had showed you earlier. Oh, and here we can see right here an order problem for alphabetizing them. Okay, it wants me to use Brad, move Bradshaw down and put brace before Bradshaw, which would be correct, right? So you can tell that by these little arrows with the number. All right, once you're done with this, usually you need to make the corrections accept the track changes, and do it repeatedly until you have a low score. You won't usually have a score of zero because this will pick up on things that don't need cited. It has trouble when you're citing an organization instead of an author, and it's not perfect, but it is a wonderful resource, and that is what many of your teachers at ACE University are going to be using to check your references, okay? So thank you so much for your time and you have a great day.